Okay, you guys, so we are gonna do this stick foundation old school style. I'm gonna talk you through it. We're gonna do this. Okay, so when wearing stick foundation, right? Listen to me, because I know y'all don't like to listen to me. Y'all like to listen to Instagram. Y'all are of the world now. Y'all don't listen to the godly guide no more, honey. Y'all gotta listen to me. I'm your mother, I'm your original mother. No, seriously, when wearing stick foundation, you wanna be careful of applying too much skincare. And you are going to want to apply a nice, first of all, skincare, skincare is the original makeup, right? When going in to wear a stick foundation, like the, the skincare that I wore today is the clinically, is the clinical skincare firm collagen moisturizer, seven types of collagen from Peter Thomas Roth. This is one of my staple skincare, okay? You're gonna wanna, and I hate this phrase, pea size amount, but truly you're not gonna wanna overload your skin. Because stick foundations have a tendency to be a little bit more glidey, I don't wanna see you dripping oil down your face. I don't wanna see you taking big scoops of moisturizer and then primer and then applying a stick to a greasy fate, like, I'm gonna just stop and stare at y'all for a few seconds. Y'all fell off from me and, and y'all are paying for it, period. No, seriously, let's get real. So when applying a stick foundation, don't apply too much moisturizer, too much oil, any of that, too much primer. So I have all my moisturizer. Now, I, I have several primers that I use. I truly, truly have several. I love one from Fenty. Um, I love No Problem. That's like a cult favorite. I have been loving the, the one from NARS. What you're gonna wanna do when you're looking for your primer is number one, be concerned about your skin type. If you have very oily skin, go for a mattifying or a smoothing primer because a lot of times if you have oily skin, you have texture, right? Um, go for something if you're gonna be outside during the day that has a little bit of SPF in it. So the one that I'm gonna be using is from La Roche-Posay, and I really like this because it not only has SPF, it's not a oily kind of primer, and it is going to make the texture of your skin look amazing, okay? You can primer cocktail, like if you have a dehydrated forehead, but your cheeks are oily, like you have combination skin, apply a hydrating primer to your forehead, and then, you know, a mattifying or poor texture smoothing primer to your t-zone you're gonna really want to apply this and don't do like on instagram where you squeeze a whole bunch they be on instagram doing the most just and that is just to get your attention they usually throw that product away or scoop it back into their jar or do whatever they do you know even on the occasions when don't do that don't do that especially if you're a grown-up if you're young and you're goofy and you want to run around looking a mess that's your business you have your whole life to get your stuff together if you're a grown-up don't do it <laughs> okay so we're gonna go in with the stick foundation now the one I'm using is fashion fair skin flex okay skin flex suede silk and this is an amazing um stick foundation i've tried stick foundations from a lot of cup look how it blends i've tried stick foundations from a lot of companies and they're greasy and they're heavy and they're shiny and they just don't do it for me now what you're going to want to do because each foundation has an optimal method of application Liquid foundation works best with certain tools. Cream foundation works best with certain tools. Powder foundation works best with certain tools. Stick foundation is no exception. Exception. So you're gonna wanna use something that is tightly packed and has dense bristles because you really wanna blend it in. Please, for the love of God, do not apply your stick foundation Swipe, swipe, swipe it all over your face and, and then go pat it with a beauty blender sponge. Can y'all please not do that for me? I want you to really get in there and blend your foundation. It doesn't have to be round and round and round, although I do like that method. It can be back and forth. It can be up and down. I am gonna leave my center open for a different shade. You guys know that I usually operate under two or three colors when it comes to doing my base because my face is not what? 
one color. Your face is not one color and your foundation should not be one color. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do this whole face and then we're gonna come in and do the center. while you're blending your foundation is probably just sitting on your skin looking weird you don't listen to me you listen to instagram now y'all grown now y'all gonna have enough of listening to these 14 year olds do they do they make up you're not 14 if you're watching this and you're 14 then hey you're 14 but if you're not When it comes to the center of your face and anywhere else on your face, you are more than welcome to mix textures. However, I like to keep consistency. If I'm using cream, I like to use cream. If I'm using liquid, I like to use liquid. You can definitely mix textures because I like to use liquid and cream together. So I'm going in with Amand from NARS. And this is my center tone. This is the color that is more generally found in the center of my face, which is why we now know not to match our foundation to the center of our face. If you match your foundation to the center of your face, you are most likely feeling that your foundation looks too light or you're having to go in, which is fine, go in and do a whole bunch of bronzer and contour and stuff around your edges. I prefer to match my foundation right here and then my center color right to the center of my face or to the inside of my arm. You know, you gonna mix it. You really want to create dimension on your face. It's going to help your foundation to look way more natural. And you don't wanna go from your base color, which is the outside, to your highlighter color. The contrast is just gonna be too vast and you're going to look ashy. And there is no exception for that, okay? There's no exception. You know, I, I, I talk about this type of stuff on Instagram and people always wonder, well, I do this and my foundation looks fine. And I go to their page and your foundation is a mess, period. You know, I was talking about um, drugstore foundation the other day on Instagram and how if you do use a drugstore foundation, you want to make sure to use a decent primer and you want to make sure to blend it in. And this lady's like, oh, you know, I use drugstore foundation with no primer. And I go and I look at her foundation and guess what a mess <laughs> if you've never had your foundation done really really well you may not know the difference you may not know what you are capable of looking like for a while i thought my bright red nw47 mac i thought it was a vibe until one day somebody yanked me up snatched me up pulled me in sephora sat me down hard and beat my face with makeup forever i said Okay, you're gonna really wanna get in there and blend it good. Stop acting like you're afraid to blend your makeup. Stop acting like you're afraid to touch your face. We have these people, oh, you've got to be gentle. Don't touch your face. Blend it, blend it good. Your face not gonna fall off. I mean, under the eye, be ginger, but blend it, girl. Stop playing around. Get on my nerve. Blend. You have been through a lot. <laughs> you can handle blending your foundation. You got this, trust me. On the days I want my foundation to look very, very natural, I only use two colors. On the days when I wanna look a little turned up, I'll go in with a bright J-Lo color. I always say like a J-Lo kind of golden tone. Rick a lot of people like to believe that just because you're dark, you're cool. I'm not cool. I am warm complected. That drives some people crazy because in some people's minds, you say golden, you say warm. Oh, you think you like skin. Rick 
Oh no, baby. I'm chocolate as the day is long. Ooh. But I'm golden. You see that warmth busting through? You know, you're gonna be all right. Look how good that looks. Look how good that looks. I have it set. I don't have one in abundance of product. It's blended. I'm really blending. I'm taking my time and I'm doing what? Blending. Y'all don't be blending. I don't listen to me no more. I'm never gonna let y'all forget how y'all stopped screwing with me. Oh, y'all was so mad. Oh, y'all didn't want to be my friend no more. And now look at your makeup. A mess. I know I love y'all, but y'all need to show up for me. I Y'all really do. I have a collaboration coming up with a brand. And I really want y'all to show up and show out and let these brands know that it's a good, safe bet to work with me. You know, I was going to talk about this on my other channel, and I probably still will. I'm not henpecking. I'm not complaining. I'm not going to bother y'all. But if y'all could really, like, show up for me on Instagram when I post, because y'all like... When I post something on, on YouTube, pull up, drop a comment, it helps. It really helps. I don't know how else to say it. I don't want to get back in the energy of making you guys feel like you're not supporting me. I went, I, you know, I went through that. You know, I was really throwing pity parties because it's hard to feel like you're not progressing in an area where you were instrumental. In the, from the very beginning, you know? But I know everything is gonna happen in God's time, not in my time, and I'm impatient, so I get it. But guys, show up, show up for me, not even just for me, show up for the people that you really care about and you really F with online. Show up for us, like we need it. It's hard out here for black influencers to get a coin. Our numbers be so low, but then y'all be showing love and sending, and sending messages in the DMs and then I still have people saying that, oh, I've been following you for years. I never really comment. And it's just like, babe, that's 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 just not going to do. Like, y'all got to leave comments and show up for us. I'm not going to bother you. Okay. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to contour. Now, this is not necessary. This is not necessary. But I am going to do it. I'm going to use my same little brush. And this brush is from thegodlyglow.com. This is my, um, my large taper. And I'm going to softly feather in a dark foundation. You know, a lot of people are afraid of cream contour because y'all be going so hard and applying so much. People always used to tell me, oh my God, your foundation routine requires so many steps. A lot of these steps are optional, but a lot of these steps are the steps that be having y'all gagging and had y'all gagging for a decade. These are the little tiny steps like going in with a fluffier brush now to really feather it. These are the steps that really make the foundation pop, okay? And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to do one of my tips from my from my tip video that I recently did. I'm going to go in and I'm going to blot. But closely to the hairline and around the edges and everywhere that I want to contour, I am going to put a little more darkness you understand to really bring back the nature of my face my face is laid out where the edges and around my hairline and everything is dark you just wanted to go in and perfect all the blemishes and stuff like that but other than that you want to bring your natural layout back you understand like to go in with a fluffy brush and really just merge everything your face should not look like a puzzle it should just be a beautiful just everything came together honey look at that come on you guys okay so now I'm gonna go in with a little paper towel and I'm just gonna go in the areas where I get oily extra oily and I'm just gonna lightly remove some of the moisture from the foundation now if you have dry skin you don't have to do this if you have combination skin you don't have to do this if you like a really dewy glow you don't have to do this a lot of times I'll show something and people be like I can't do it so don't do it babe 
my god okay i'm gonna take a little bit of my powder from fashion fair i will have the color on the screen for you and i'm gonna go in and set my t-zone and because this is powder well and because this is cream foundation should i say i'm gonna go in and i'm gonna lay it down nicely and i really like working with a fan brush because it really allows you to get into the areas you need to get into very neatly without disturbing anything else and really being able to create a clean shape because powder not only sets your makeup and takes it from cream or liquid to powder which is setting but it creates shapes on your face so when I see people kind of being haphazard with their powder it makes me nervous it makes me a little nervous I'm gonna sweep it back and forth under your eyes to make sure it gets in the nook and cranny If you have a larger statuesque face or if you're a larger statuesque person, be careful about over highlighting your chin. You don't want to get that Medea effect, okay? Where your face just looks very full and bulbous and large. You know, just regardless of your weight or size, it's just you want to be careful. And also when it comes to blending powder over cream, Make sure you have it down first before you start blending back and forth because you don't want to disturb your foundation. Now I'm gonna go in with a fluffy brush with my powder and I'm going to lightly stamp that everywhere. My T-zone is where I like the most um, when it comes to baking or powder because that's where I get oily. And in my opinion, on my face, that's where the aging when the makeup is breaking down and oxidizing, that is where I like the, the, the cleanest looking makeup to be. Okay, and then I'm also gonna go around my edges with a light contour powder, but even, you know, I, I did do my contour with my cream, so I don't have to. I just like to go in very lightly and really um, bring that contour through, just very lightly. Okay, so this is my contour palette from thegodlyglow.com. I'm gonna go in with a mixture of the darkest and the second darkest colors, and I'm going to just lightly contour. just very lightly. And then I'm gonna go in with a fluffier brush and blend it out, you see? And what I also really like to do is down here, close that face off, honey. Okay. If you ever feel like you're working with a powder and it's stuck or it's not blending the way you want to, go in with a little bit of your translucent setting powder and use it to really get a nice blend. This video is getting so long, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do my brows without you guys, but don't worry, click this card right here and you can check out how I do my brows and then I'll probably do my lips with you guys and we'll be pretty much done. guys so here you have it this is the full face honey this is stick foundation beat okay not too heavy not too shiny not too greasy not too much product this is a thoughtful application you know I think we get used to watching other people apply their makeup 
and we try to do it just how they do it. I hope you listened to the things I said and took what was relevant for you and your skin type and applied it. All right, you guys, so as always, everything that you need, everything that I use in this video will be linked in the bottom bar. Go ahead and check it out. Follow me on Instagram, because a lot of you guys be hitting, where were you? Where you been? I be all over the place, okay? I'm here on this channel, I'm on my vintage channel, I'm on Instagram, I be on Snapchat. No, where do you, where, where you was at? Where you been? Okay, y'all love to act like I've been gone forever. I really haven't. All right, you guys. So as always, thank you so much for commenting, rating, and subscribing. I'll be in touch and hopefully you'll do the same. Bye, guys.